Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, Kenya. Good evening, teacher. Good, Good evening, evening, Marjorie. Hi, Sylvia. Good evening, oh. Wendy. How are you today? Thank you, everybody, for being on time. I see we are well, we are almost half of the class, and I see that some others are on the way home, so maybe they they will be with us later. In the meantime, thank you so much for being on time. We're going to start the class right away. Yesterday, we started studying the prepositions of place, and also we discussed about there is and there are, the meaning and how to use there is and there are. So we're going to start from there, sharing screen. Let's see. Oh, there it is. Okay, there it is. All right, uh, so we, uh, we did a couple of sentences uh, using there is, there are proposition, and we finish this exercise. So we're going to start with this conversation. This is taken from the material that you have in the platform. Okay. And uh, as you can see, the words in bold, the, las palabras en negritas, ustedes pueden ver ahí que son there are, is there, there are, meaning that, eh, significando que ese es el, el, lo que se va a practicar, pero pues no hay una explicación previa, pero nosotros ya nos adelantamos ayer, ¿verdad? Y estuvimos practicando con there is y there are. Um, ¿Qué decíamos de there is and there are? Is, um, se utiliza para hablar de la existencia o no existencia de algo, en el caso que lo hagamos en negativo, ¿verdad? There isn't, there aren't. Eso es, no hay. Eh, también decíamos there is, siempre que vamos a mencionar un nombre singular, y there are para plurales. Entonces, habiendo hecho ese pequeño refresher, ay, ay, que no me quise Vamos a practicar esta conversación y esta, pues, al ser la del material que está en la plataforma, no hay audio pero se las voy a leer. 
Who is this? Okay, so this is Will and Tanya speaking. So let's start. Hello, can you help me? Where is the Melbourne building? I don't live here. Don't worry, there are four buildings. Which one do you need? A girl told me to go to the building on Main Street. I know it. It's down the street on the left side. Thanks. I have to ask you something else. Is there a training center? There are a lot of training centers on the building between Main and King Street. I have some interviews there. Thank you again. Bye-bye. Okay, uh, let's see if you have any questions. Sí, teacher. ¿Qué, quiere, ¿Qué significa buildings? Buildings es edificio. Ah, ok. Uh -huh. Y Melbourne es el nombre de, o es... Sí, exacto. Es el nombre del edificio. Gracias. Welcome. Any other questions? Okay, as uh, you don't have more questions, do we have volunteers to role play this conversation? Volunteers to practice? Okay, I have Marjorie. And Sandy, thank you so much, Marjorie and Sandy. You can start, Marjorie. Hello, can you help me? Where is the Melbourne building? I don't like, I don't live here. Don't worry, there are four buildings. Which one do you need? A girl told me to go to the building on Main Street. I know it, it's down the street on the left side. Thanks. I have to ask you something else. Is there a training center? There are a lot of training center on the building between Main and King Street. I have some interview there. Thank you. Thank you again. Bye bye. Bye. Excellent. You did a very nice job. Le hicieron súper bien y algo muy importante de, de resaltar es de que al practicar, ustedes mismas se corrigieron con la palabra live. So, al principio dijo de otro modo, pero recordó, ah, es live. Y usted misma lo dijo, ah, live. Y también con building hubo así como que duda, pero lo hizo bien. Luego eh, Sandy y Marjorie hicieron un muy buen trabajo. Y para eso sirve la práctica, porque con la práctica es, es que nos vamos a ir eh, sintiendo eh, más segura, ¿verdad? Eh, entonces, eh, gracias por su participación eh, y sigan adelante. Quisiera saber si hay dos más. Two more volunteers, please, to role play. I have Alfonso and I have María. Vamos a empezar con Alfonso y María. Uh, Alfonso, you can start. 
Okay. Hello. Can you help me? Where is the bell bell board building? And I live here. Don't worry. There are four buildings. Which one do you need? A girl told me to go to the building on Main Street. Oh no, it is down the street on the left side. Thanks. I had to ask ask you sometime is is there a, a training center? There are a lot of training centers on the building between Main and Kane Street. I have some interview there. Thank you. Thank you again. Bye bye. <laughs> Okay, that's it. Pretty good. Thank you so much. So, um, nothing to say. Continue practicing. I have Silvia as well. Thank you, Maria and Alfonso. You did really well. Uh, volunteer to practice with Silvia. Wendy, thank you so much. Silvia and Wendy, you can start, Silvia. Hello, can you help me? Where is the Melbourne building? Building. I, building. Uh, I don't live uh, here. 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 <clears throat> don't worry. There are four buildings. Which one do you need? I gi I girl told me uh, to go the building. Building, building on my main street. Main. I know. Main street. I know it. It's down the street on the left side. 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 Trunks. I have to to a to <clears throat> ask it. <laughs> you summon a uh, summoning. Something else. else. Something else is is where a training center. There are a lot of training centers on the building between Main and King Street. <clears throat> um, I me perdí. Ah, okay, I have some. I have some interview there. Uh, thanks you. Um, ¿Cómo se pronuncia ahí, teacher? A guy. Ajá, uh -huh, again. I'm a gant. Uh, bye bye. Okay. Ah. <laughs> Algo trabada, teacher, pero ahí vamos. <laughs> pero es, esa es la forma en que se destraba uno, practicando. <laughs> y esa es la forma en que se destraba y que aprende tal vez sin eh, palabras que... Eh, no sabíamos cómo decir ahora pues ya con la práctica las vamos um, aprendiendo verdad con building es este es, cuesta solo acuérdense que la u no se pronuncia es como decir building building la u no se pronuncia y así se le va a hacer más fácil but that's okay thank you so much for practicing eh, vi la manita de Amelia no sé todo no no vi Amelia, y no sé si hay alguien más a practicar con Amelia. Kenya, thank you so much, Kenya and Amelia. You can start, Amelia. Okay. Uh, hello, can you help me? Where is the Melbourne, Melbourne building? I don't live here. Don't worry. There are four buildings. Which one do you need? Angel told me to do, to go to the building on my street. I know it is down the street on the left side. Thank, thank. I have to ask you something, Elsie. Is something there a, else. else is there a, there a training center 
There are a lot of, of training centers on the buildings between the main and cane train. I have so, some inter, interview there. Thank you. I, I, I get bye bye. Thank you again. Bye bye. Okay. Okay, very well done. Thank you so much, Amelia and Kenya. Thank you for your participation. And I think I have a chat here. Okay, Arlene is on the way. Thank you so much for letting us know. Um, okay, so to continue with this exercise, we have some questions here. Let's read the number one. How many Melbourne buildings are there? Where is the building where we want to go located? How many training centers are there and where are they? So we have to answer these questions and we can find the information here in the conversation that we've been practicing. I'll give you time for you to answer the three questions and then uh, we're going to share the answers. No, I just don't feel okay.
finish answering the questions? Yes, teacher. Okay. What do you have for number one? What is the answer? How many Melbourne buildings are there? Um, there are four buildings. Excellent. Excellent answer. There are four buildings. Okay, there are four buildings. And if you wrote the name of the building, that's fine. Para los que pusieron there are four Melbourne building, it's correct too. Thank you so much, Marjorie. Number two, what is the building where we want to go located? No, no sé si está correcta. Perdón. Pero... Yo le puse, is down the street on the left side. Ajá. Uh -huh. So, yes, it's on Main Street, and yes, you can say it is on Main Street. On Main Street. In the left side. Okay, and that's okay. Thank you so much. Last question. How many training centers are there and where are they? There are a lot of training centers. Yes, there is not an exact number. So they say only a lot of, so yes, there. There are a lot of training centers. And next question is, where are they? Between Main and Kane Street. Mm -hmm. ¿Cómo se pronuncia Kane? Kane, Kane. Between Main and King. King. Mm -hmm. In what's, what do you mean King? Es el nombre de la calle. King Street. King. Mm -hmm. Y si buscamos el significado de King, es eh, Rey. Rey es King. Y Reina Queen. Mm -hmm. En este caso es el nombre de la calle. La sí. calle del rey. <laughs> yes. Ok, so let's continue then. Um, there is and there are. Yesterday we were practicing um, the uses of there is and there are. And we said that we use there is plus a singular noun. There are plus a plural noun. And we can use also some quantifiers uh, when we are using there is. Cuando estamos usando there is, podemos utilizar a o an para decir un o una, ¿verdad? Ya que el there is es para singular, podemos usar esos, eh, el, el artículo. Y tenemos un ejemplo, eh, dos. There is an ATM across the street. There is a recruitment center on the corner of Roosevelt Street and First Avenue. And for a negative example, we have there is no clothing factory around the corner. Any question about the examples here with that is? No questions? Okay, so then let's move uh, with the examples using there are. As we said before, we use there are plus a plural noun. Let's read the examples. 
When we use terar, we can uh, add some quantifiers. Estos quantifiers que están ahí eh, no son para dar una cantidad exacta, sino que nos da una idea nada más. Por ejemplo, si usamos a lot of, eso significa muchos. Eh, there are a lot of companies down the street. Some es como para decir algunos o algunas. There are some supermarkets on the right and left side of the street. Y para negativo, there are no hospitals on various streets. Now, the exercise. Complete this exercise with there is or there are in a quantifier. Okay? Vamos a estar usando there is, there are y un eh, quantifier. En el, se nos está dando algunos. Están ahí en paréntesis lo que debemos utilizar. A marketing presentation across the street in the morning. Ahí no nos da nada, pero sabemos que tenemos que hacer un quantifier. Tenemos que utilizar un quantifier. ¿Cómo nos quedaría ahí? There is an marketing. Ah, marketing. There Excelente. Is there is a marketing presentation across the street in the morning. Okay, muy bien. There is a marketing presentation across the street in the morning. Y si van a ir trabajando las demás, luego vamos a compartir nuestro trabajo.
Muy bien. Teacher, I have a question. Uh -huh. eh, cuando la oración es, es negativa, también se tiene de, se debe cuantificar. No. Cuando ah, es negativo, okay. ¿no? Eh, okay. Cuando es negativo, pueden poner N. Eh, se lo voy a escribir en el chat. Es N. Ese es para oraciones negativas. O lo pueden dejar con no, como está ahí. Pero si ponen, eh, ah, le voy a dar una, ah, por ejemplo, la 3. Voy a hacerles la 3 como para darles el ejemplo con un quantifier que es lo, lo de negativo. Pues no, es, en realidad no podemos poner uh -huh. un quantifier en, en una oración negativa. Eh, en ni es como decir ninguno o nada de, ¿verdad? Nada o ninguno. En este caso, recruitment centers es plural. Entonces sería there are no o aren't any. There aren't any. There aren't any recruitment centers around my building. O la otra que me imagino que así la han hecho. There are no. There are no recruitment centers around my building. Así sería eh, lo, lo más eh, hasta donde hemos visto ahorita, ¿verdad? Pero si quieren ponerle como un poco más completa o más avanzada, sería there aren't any. Así como le escribí el ejemplo. Y yo escribo eh, there are not, es correcto también. Eh, there are not recruitment centers. So there are not or there aren't recruitment centers. Sí, es correcto también. Ok. Mm -hmm. So let's see, anybody for number two? I volunteer to share the number two, Silvia. Thank you. Um, where are some? Excellent, Silvia. There are some business workshops down the street. Good. A uh, volunteer for number four, Rosemary. There is no story. In the corner of Rosby. Excellent. There is no store on the corner of Roosevelt Street and Second Avenue. Very well done. Thank you so much. Number five. Kenya and six Marjorie. Kenya number five. There are vans behind the factory I work. Uh, there are banks, solo faltó el quantifier. Podría poner some o a lot of. Okay. But very well. Thank you so much, Kenya. Uh, number six, Marjorie. Teacher. Y también se, puede, también se puede poner there are a banks o some. No, there are a bank, no, porque está en plural. Entonces el a, recuérdense que el a es para singular, porque significa un o una. Si yo digo uh -huh. hay un banco, entonces sí, pero tiene que ser there is. There is a bank. Uh, ok. Uh -huh. Ok, en, en el la siguiente tal vez podría ser. There, there is, is an Aranza building. An Aranza building. Mm -hmm. okay. Justo así la tengo, teacher. There is an Aranza building around the corner. Excellent, Marjorie. Thank you so much for sharing. There is an Aranza building around the corner. Excellent job. Congratulations to everyone.
Okay, now to describe places, uh, we use there is and there are también para describir un lugar. Uh, describe how and many others, my, my, how my, how me, sería. <laughs> describe how, how I and other working and, and others working places and areas look like. Qué raro está redactado eso. Okay, the written description of Mr. Paz and Mrs. Aguilar works places. Can you guess where they work? Vamos a, re a, a re leer estas descripciones para eh, tener algunos ejemplos de cómo el there is y there are también lo podemos utilizar para describir lugares. Let's see for Mr. Paz. There is a beautiful lobby. There is a beautiful lobby. There are comfortable rooms. There are comfortable rooms. There is a huge parking lot. There is a huge parking lot. There are three high-tech elevators. There are three high-tech elevators. Let's read the description of Mrs. Aguilar's place. There is a narrow reception area. There is a narrow reception area. There are two dirty dining rooms. There are two dirty dining rooms. There is an ugly photocopy center. There is an ugly photocopy center. There are small offices. There are small offices. Questions about vocabulary? Teacher, ¿qué significa eh, la tercera de Mr. Paz? Donde dice, Uge, oh, ahí es la palabra. There is a huge parking lot. Okay, huge es amplio. Es como ah, decir sí. amplio, grande, espacioso. Gracias. Okay. Y narrow, precision, era. Narrow es lo opuesto de huge. Narrow es algo estrecho o estrecha, en este caso estrecha. Dirty, dining room. Sucio, dirty es sucio. Ugly es feo, ¿no? Feo, yes. Ok, creo que ya cubrimos eh, lo que es el vocabulario. Mm. Y aquí, pues, es como repetir lo mismo. How does Mr. Paz describe his workplace? What does Mrs. Aguilar think about her workplace? And on which of the places do you want to work and why? Ahí solo es describir de cómo... Cada uno de ellos describe su lugar de trabajo, que sería básicamente repetir lo mismo. Y la número tres, pregunta tres, eh, ¿en cuál de los dos lugares te gustaría trabajar? Yo creo que a todos nos gustaría donde Mr. Paz. <ríe> ok, entonces no, no le veo caso. ¿verdad? Entonces, um, 
lo que podemos hacer es un ejercicio un poco diferente y escribir algunas oraciones um, acerca de nuestro lugar de trabajo usando there is, there are y algún adjetivo. Eh, por ejemplo, digamos, describir de eh, el lugar de trabajo. Hay ciertos lugares que son más bonitos que otros, entonces podemos utilizar adjetivos positivos o negativos. Positivos tenemos comfortable, que es lo que estamos viendo en comfortable, es algo eh, cómodo, que se siente cómodo, pero no, no en precio, sino que de, de comodidad, de confort. Eso es comfortable. Huge, ya dijimos, es algo espacioso, grande, nice, es bonito, um, illuminated, es iluminado. Entonces, solo esos son positive adjectives. Y hay negative adjectives, también adjetivos negativos, como decir narrow, es estrecho, es, no es para un lugar, no es algo positivo decir que es estrecho. Eh, disgusting, uh, disgusting es desagradable, asqueroso, disgusting. Y tenemos smelly, smelly es algo que huele mal, hediondo, smelly. Ya con esto, pues, podemos escribir algunas oraciones sobre nuestro lugar de trabajo. Eh, uh, we could say, uh, for example, if I think in the academy where I work at inglés corporativo, I would say uh, there, are, there are many classrooms. Um, There are comfortable classrooms. There are air conditioner systems in each classroom. And there is no cafeteria. Um, what else? Uh, there is a small reception area. Mm, there is... There is not many parking spaces around. Um, there is a beautiful garden. There is an avocado tree. And that's pretty much uh, about my workplace. What about yours? I'll give you time for you to write a couple of sentences about your workplaces.
Okay, let's listen to some volunteers to describe the workplace. Volunteers to read the descriptions. Rosemary, thank you so much. Mm, Evan, there is a small chin. There is small chin. Sí. Okay. That for your workplace? Only small chain? Maria, thank you so much. Um, there is a big garden. There are many students. There are three soccer and basketball fields. And there is no air conditioner in classroom. Okay, pretty good. Thank you so much, Maria. Very, very complete. Thank you. Sandy? Um, there is a narrow parking. There is no cafeteria. <laughs> um, there is a narrow reception area, but there are comfort. Como se dice comfortable? ¿Cómo se dice? ¿Cómo se pronuncia? Comfort. Ah, comfortable. Com there are comfortable shares in the office. Okay. Nice. Thank you so much. Any other volunteer? No more volunteers? Okay, so let's complete the next exercise to write sentences. Um, complete the sentences using the word provided and the correct verb. What would be the correct verb? There is or there are. For example, uh, the number one. Veamos como ejemplo. ¿Cómo nos quedaría? Acá, ¿cuál es el verbo correcto? There is o are? Is. There is. There is. Ajá. A, y ahí ponemos el quantifier porque está singular. A small gym. A small gym. Small gym. Y así van a continuar con las demás oraciones.
finished. Yes. Okay, a uh, volunteer for number two. La dos de este lado. There are some new training rooms. Okay. There are some new training rooms. Excellent. There are some new training rooms. Thank you so much. Number three. There are clean cafeterias. Okay, excellent. There are clean cafeterias. Okay, le podemos poner some or a lot of or many clean cafeterias. There are clean cafeterias. Uh, number four. Teacher. Yes. Eh, si fuera una cafetería, digamos, eh, se le agrega la S al verbo. O no se utiliza ahí como verbo. Si fuera una cafetería, digamos, there, are, there is cleans cafeteria. No. O, o no. No, porque cleans, eh, clean es un adjetivo. No lo Pero podemos también poner una S. Es un verbo. Uh -huh. No es un verbo también. En, es verbo y es adjetivo. En este caso está, con, está funcionando como adjetivo. Ajá. No como verbo. El verbo aquí uh -huh. es cero estar, que en este caso es are, porque está en plural. Ah, ok. Uh -huh. sí, sí. Aquí la oración dice hay cafeterías limpias. Pero si me dice, entonces, porque en español decimos cafeterías limpias, pero en inglés no. En inglés solo se pluraliza lo que es el noun, el, el nombre. En este caso la cafetería, cafeterías. Ok. Uh -huh. Any other question? Ok, vamos al número cuatro. Volunteer for number four. Mm, sería teacher, there is a smart meeting room. Yes, Rosemary, excellent. There is a smart meeting room. Uh, <laughs> there is a smart meeting room. There is a smart meeting room. Okay, number five. Podría um, ser there are a lot of Complex bathrooms or some. Mm -hmm. There are mm -hmm. a lot of unpleasant Bathroom. bathrooms. Excellent. There are a lot of unpleasant bathrooms. Tiny cubicle. Tiny cubicles. Volunteer. There is a tiny cubicle. Excellent. Very good. There is a tiny cubicle. Okay. All right. So we have finished this part. We're going to stop for a little while so I can check attendance. Oh. 
Vamos a parar un ratito y revisar asistencia. Ok. Alejandra estaba como oyente, pero no sé si ya está por ahí. Alejandra Guadalupe. Sí, ahí les veo que está como oyente, tal como escribió. Gracias por confirmar, Alejandra. Vamos a seguir entonces con Amelia Georgina. Present. Thank you. Lynn Natalie. Present. Ok. Cristóbal Alfonso. Present. Ok. Elvis Marlon. Jacqueline Priscila. Present. Ok. Jessima Marjorie. Present. Thank you so much, Jessica. Jessima. Thank you, Elvis. Veo que se aún de camino. Thank you so much, Elvis. Eh, Jessima, José de Nilsson. Aquí está en el chat. José, thank you so much. Um, Karen Rocío. Present. Thank you. Carla Verónica. Kenny Alice. Present. Thank you. Larissa Natalia. Luis Enrique. Present. Thank you. Marvin Ovidio. Rosemary Saraí. Present. Thank you. Sandy Melissa. Present teacher. Ok. Silvia Marina. Present teacher. Thank you. Vanessa Janet. Present. Thank you. Berenice Dalia. Wendy Carolina. Present. Thank you. Sayuri Esmeralda. Okay, let's continue sharing them. Teacher, no escuché mi nombre, disculpe. María Santos. Present. Yeah. <laughs> no escuché que, que, que dijera mi nombre. Um, a lo mejor no lo, no lo mencioné, pero gracias por confirmar, pero sí le había puesto present. <laughs> A lo mejor no la mencioné, pero sí estaba como present. Gracias por confirmar. Licenciada, yo tampoco escuché mi nombre, perdón. Sí la mencioné, Berenice. Um, Ay, no, perdón. Uh -huh. Me extrañó que no contestara y tampoco vi nada en el chat. Ok, aquí la chequeo ahorita. Bueno. Muchas gracias. Ok. Vamos a ver. Que iba a compartir. Ok, uh, now let's move to next exercise. Uh, let me show you my screen. For the next exercise, we have uh, uh, word power, places, and things. Eh, eso es lo que tenemos luego en el material y vamos a trabajarlo desde acá. Uh, para que escuchemos el audio. Uh, vamos a ver vocabulario, lugares. Uh, la vez pasada vimos algunos y surgieron algunas palabras nuevas como City Hall, que dijimos que era el City Hall. Eh, 
eh, City Hall era el ayuntamiento o alcaldía. Esa era City Hall. Lo vimos en la vez pasada. Y bueno, creo que ese era el único que estaba así como decir nuevo, vocabulario nuevo. Eh, aquí tenemos a algunos lugares eh, adicionales. Tenemos a post office, a drugstore, a gas station, a department store, a bank, a bookstore, a coffee shop, a supermarket. Let's read once again. A post office. A drugstore. A gas station. A department store. A bank. A bookstore. A coffee shop. A supermarket. Okay, for this exercise, we're going to uh, complete here. Where can you get these things? Match these things with the places and then listen and practice. What are the things that we have? We have aspirin, bread, dictionary, gasoline, sandwich, stamps, a suit, traveler's check, Let's read the vocabulary one more time. Aspirin, bread, a dictionary, gasoline, a sandwich, stamp, a suit, traveler's check. All right, so where can we get an aspirin? So you can say you can get an, uh, an aspirin at a drugstore, okay? So we have aspirin, letter B, drugstore. Then we have to do the same with a bread. Where can you get bread? Coffee shop? No. <laughs> Um, not exactly. Uh, supermarket. Aha, uh -huh, at a supermarket. So, H. So, we put here H. Where can you get that dictionary? A bookstore. Letter F at a bookstore. Where can you get gasoline? Gas a station. station. A station, See. yes. Where, where can you get a sandwich? Where can you get a, a coffee shop? At a coffee shop. Uh -huh. That's for the sandwich. Uh, sandwich in a coffee shop? Yes. Ese es un coffee shop, la coffee cup. También vende sandwiches en a Starbucks. Esos son ejemplos de una coffee shop. <laughs> Y en, en ambas se puede, pues, adquirir un sándwich. Como ven ahí la, la, la fotito del coffee shop, hay dos personas, están tomando un cafecito, es como normalmente hay, hay aparte de lo que son postres, sándwiches. Any other question? Okay, so let's continue. Where can we get stamps? A post office. 
at a post office. Yes, a suit. A supermarket. A suit in a supermarket. Department store. Hmm? Department store. In a department store. Uh huh. A suit. We can get a suit in a department store. Let's listen. Wait, tengo que compartir audio primero. Unit 13. You can't miss it. Page 86, exercise 1. Word power. Places and things. Part A. Where can you buy these things? Match the things with the places. Then listen and practice. 1. You can buy aspirin at a drugstore. 2. You can buy bread at a supermarket. 3. You can buy a dictionary at a bookstore. 4. You can buy gasoline at a gas station. 5. You can buy a sandwich at a coffee shop. 6. You can buy stamps at a post office. 7. You can buy a suit at a department store. 8. You can buy traveler's checks at a bank. Okay. But any question? Okay, if you don't have any question, the next thing that we have is a listening practice. Listening, I need a new swimsuit. That is the listening topic. And after the listening, we're going to practice a little bit more uh, pronunciation with this conversation that we have here. But first, first things first, I'm going to get the audio for you to complete that listening. And in case that you don't have printed the material, I'll give you time. Les voy a dar tiempo para que medio dibujen así el cuadrito si no, si no lo tienen impreso el material. ¿Qué vamos a hacer? Vamos a completar la información. Uh, listen to Anderson's family conversation. What do they need? Where are they going to get the things? Complete the chart. Eh, tenemos what y where. Acuérdense que what es qué y where es dónde. Entonces, para Jean, Mom, Dad, and Mike, tenemos que completar qué es lo que quieren comprar y dónde lo van a comprar. Acuérdense que el vocabulario, pues ya vimos ese post office, department store, um, coffee shop, supermarket. Eh, post office, creo que ya la dije, y gas station. Y todos esos lugares que acabamos de estudiar, de al, uno de ellos va a ir en cada línea acá. Es que les, les estoy dando tiempo para que eh, medio hagan en su cuaderno, para que vayan anotando la información que vamos a escuchar.
Okay, ready? Vamos a proceder entonces con el listening. Vamos a escuchar la conversación. Y recuerden que lo que vamos es a completar qué. ¿Qué es lo que van a comprar? Eh, para Jean, en el número uno, ya está completo ahí. ¿Qué es lo que necesita Jean? A swimsuit. ¿A dónde lo va a comprar? Ahí llenamos. Mom, Dad, and Mike. Tienen que ir completando para todos. Puede poner el listening en unas tres veces. Eh, pues probando a ver si es suficiente. Y si no, pues volvemos a ponerlo. Page 87, Exercise 2, Listening. I need a new swimsuit. Part A. Listen to the Anderson family's conversations. What do they need? Where are they going to get the things? Complete the chart. 1. Jean, are you going to come to the beach with us tomorrow? Yes, but I need a new swimsuit. I'm going to go to a department store this afternoon. Maybe I can find one. Good. Can I go with you? I need to get some things, too. 2. Are you going to look for some clothes, Mom? Oh, no. I'm going to go to the supermarket. What do you need? I just need some cookies for tomorrow. We're going to take a picnic lunch to the beach. Oh, good. Can you get chocolate cookies? Sure. 3. What's wrong, Dad? I have a terrible headache. Oh, that's too bad. Do we have any aspirin? I can't find any in the house. No, we don't. Sorry. Hmm. I need some right now. I'm going to go to the drugstore and get some. 4. Where are you going, Mike? To the bookstore. What for? Do you need a book? No, I want a magazine. I need something to read at the beach tomorrow. Are you going to walk? No, drive. Hey, where's the car? Your father has it. He's at the drugstore. Page 87, Exercise 2, Listening. I need a new swimsuit. Part A. Listen to the Anderson family's conversations. What do they need? Where are they going to get the things? Complete the chart. 1. Jean, are you going to come to the beach with us tomorrow? Yes, but I need a new swimsuit. I'm going to go to a department store this afternoon. Maybe I can find one. Good. Can I go with you? I need to get some things, too. 2. Are you going to look for some clothes, Mom? Oh, no. I'm going to go to the supermarket. What do you need? I just need some cookies for tomorrow. We're going to take a picnic lunch to the beach. Oh, good. Can you get chocolate cookies? Sure. 3. What's wrong, Dad? I have a terrible headache. Oh, that's too bad. Do we have any aspirin? I can't find any in the house. No, we don't. Sorry. Hmm. I need some right now. I'm going to go to the drugstore and get some. 4. Where are you going, Mike? To the bookstore. What for? Do you need a book? No, I want a magazine. I need something to read at the beach tomorrow. Are you going to walk? No, drive. Hey, where's the car? Your father has it. He's at the drugstore. Page 87, Exercise 2, Listening. I need a new swimsuit. Part A. Listen to the Anderson family's conversations. What do they need? Where are they going to get the things? Complete the chart. 
one. Jean, are you going to come to the beach with us tomorrow? Yes, but I need a new swimsuit. I'm going to go to a department store this afternoon. Maybe I can find one. Good. Can I go with you? I need to get some things too. Two. Are you going to look for some clothes, Mom? Oh, no. I'm going to go to the supermarket. What do you need? I just need some cookies for tomorrow. We're going to take a picnic lunch to the beach. Oh, good. Can you get chocolate cookies? Sure. Three. What's wrong, Dad? I have a terrible headache. Oh, that's too bad. Do we have any aspirin? I can't find any in the house. No, we don't. Sorry. Hmm. I need some right now. I'm going to go to the drugstore and get some. Four. Where are you going, Mike? To the bookstore. What for? Do you need a book? No, I want a magazine. I need something to read at the beach tomorrow. Are you going to walk? No, drive. Hey, where's the car? Your father has it. He's at the drugstore. Did you complete all the information? Yes. 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 Excellent. Yes. Okay, we're going to check. Oh. <laughs> so, what does, well, Jean needs a swimsuit. Where is she going to get it? Department store. Department store. Okay. What about mom? What does she need? Uh, una cookies. 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 Some cookies. Okay. Where is she going to buy them? Supermarket. 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 The supermarket. Okay. What about that? What does he need? Aspirin. Aspirin. Aspirin? Okay. Where is he going to get them? A drugstore. Drugstore. At a drugstore. Okay. What about Mike? What does Mike need? Magazine. 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 And where is he going to get them? The bookstore. 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 In a bookstore. Okay. I I have the answers here. So you can check them. And your answers are correct. Excellent. <laughs> okay. Very well done. That's a good job. Now, um, yeah, so let's see. You have Jean, uh, since it. She's going to get it at the department store. Mom needs some cookies, and she's going to get them at the supermarket. Dad needs an aspirin, and he's going to get them at the drugstore. Mike needs a magazine, and he's going to get the magazine at the bookstore okay all right so after this listening we have this conversation to practice our pronunciation let's see what do we have here look at the scenario there is a there is a man talking to a woman he is with a Kid, yes, it's a little kid, and they they do not look happy. They look like worried, and they are uh they are on the street. What's going on? Let's listen to the conversation, and then then we're going to define some vocabulary or pronunciation. Page eighty seven, exercise three, conversation. It's an emergency. Listen and practice. Excuse me, can you help me? Is there a public restroom around here? A public restroom? Hmm, I'm sorry, I don't think so. Oh no, my son needs a restroom, now. It's an emergency. Oh dear. Well, there's a restroom in the department store on Main Street. Where on Main Street? It's on the corner of Main and First Avenue. 
On the corner of Main and First? Yes, it's across from the park. You can't miss it. Thanks a lot. Okay, questions? No questions? Okay, as uh, there are no questions, I'm going to play the recording once again and I'll give you time for you to repeat. Page 87, exercise three, conversation. It's an emergency. Listen and practice. Excuse me, can you help me? Is there a public restroom around here? A public restroom? Hmm, I'm sorry, I don't think so. Oh, no. My son needs a restroom. Now. It's an emergency. Oh, dear. Well, there's a restroom in the department store on Main Street. Where on Main Street? It's on the corner of Main and First Avenue. On the corner of Main and First? Yes, it's across from the park. You can't miss it. Thanks a lot. Okay, um, before we go to the breakout rooms to practice this conversation, eh, vamos a ir a los breakout rooms a practicar esta conversación, pero antes vamos a hacer el ejercicio de pronunciación de estos compound nouns. Eh, un nombre compuesto, pues son, es un nombre que se compone de, de dos palabras raíz, ¿verdad? Como por ejemplo, post. Si solo decimos post, tiene un significado. Si decimos office, también tiene un significado. Las dos juntas tienen un, otro significado diferente. Eh, lo mismo que pasa con rest. Sabemos que rest es descansar y room es cuarto. So, para decir un cuarto de descanso, ponemos restroom, etc. Estos son los nombres compuestos. A esto se refiere con compound noun. Y si se fijan, la mayoría de ellos, eh, los que tenemos acá como ejemplo, donde está esa bolita, la mayoría la tiene en la primera sílaba. A excepción de esta, de department store, la tiene en la segunda sílaba, department store. Entonces vamos a ir escuchando. Y eh, repitiendo en casa, eh, haciendo el estrés a donde va la bolita esa. Page 87, exercise 4, pronunciation. Compound nouns. Part A. Listen and practice. 
Notice the stress in these compound nouns. Post office. Gas station. Restroom. Coffee shop. Drugstore. Bookstore. Supermarket. Department store. Page 87, Exercise 4, Pronunciation. Compound nouns. Part A. Listen and practice. Notice the stress in these compound nouns. Post office. Gas station. Restroom. Coffee shop. Drugstore. Bookstore. Supermarket. Department store. Bien. Voy a ponerles la conversación una vez más para que repitan en casa y luego vamos a hacerlo en los breakout rooms para que practiquen con diferentes compañeros. Acuérdense que entre más lo practiquen, eh, es mejor. Se les va a ir quedando más la pronunciación de las palabras que están ahí y pues igual verdad si de repente no estoy en el salón donde están practicando y escuchan que algún compañero o compañera tiene dificultad con alguna palabra y usted la, la sabe por ejemplo les cuesta un poquito here y si alguien dice here usted le dice ahí es here compañero aquí es here mm. Es haciendo, ayudándose uno a otro, no es eh, para que lo entiendan mal, sino que es en, en aras de ayudar, ¿verdad? Así es que eh, tómenlo eh, como una práctica, ¿verdad? El ayudar a otros que también, pues ahí se complementan de repente, puede que el que ayudó hoy necesite ayuda más tardecito, etcétera. Así es que es eh, una cuestión de compañerismo, ¿verdad? No de verlo como que, ay, no, es que... Eh, de, de alguna otra manera que vean, no, o veanlo como un modo de compañerismo, el que alguien le ayude y le diga, mire compañero, ahí donde dice around, la próxima palabra es here, eh, no, no se dice here, es here, so that's fine, es compañerismo. Así es que vamos a escucharla una vez más y luego vamos a practicar en los breakout rooms. Page 87, exercise 3. Conversation. It's an emergency. Listen and practice. Excuse me, can you help me? Is there a public restroom around here? A public restroom? Hmm, I'm sorry, I don't think so. Oh, no. My son needs a restroom. Now. It's an emergency. Oh, dear. Well, there's a restroom in the department store on Main Street. Where on Main Street? It's on the corner of Main and First Avenue. On the corner of Main and First? Yes, it's across from the park. You can't miss it. Thanks a lot. Ok, ya casi nos vamos a practicar en los breakout rooms. Pero antes quiero mencionarles esta palabra eh, para que lo tengan en mente. Eh, emergency. 
emergency es una palabra que se parece al español, tienen el mismo significado, entonces tienden a hacer acento en, en dicen emergency, emergency, porque emergencia, en español decimos emergencia, entonces se tiende a decir así, pero recuerden que estamos en, 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 las, en inglés, el estrés en esta, por ejemplo, va en emergency, en la segunda E, no en la tercera, ¿ok? Eh, acuérdense de hacer el, el estrés en la segunda E y decir emergency, 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 no en la tercera E, en la segunda. Vamos a hacerlo en la segunda, emergency, ¿ok? Vamos a ir a los break rooms para practicar esta conversación. Recuerden la que la tienen en la guía que mandé para esta última semana. Y antes uh, que todos puedan compartir. Ahí está. Aquí. Noches. ¿Alguien nos puede compartir? Vaya. Inicio. Yo soy el hombre. <risa> sí, el de la emergencia. Bueno, está bien. Ok. Excuse me. Can you help me? Is there a public restroom around here? A public restroom. Mm, I'm sorry, I don't think so. Oh no, my son needs a restroom now. It's an emergency. Oh dear. Well, me escucho. In the department store. On many streets. Where is uh, Main Street? It's on the corner of Main in the First Avenue. Oh, the corner of Main of First? Yes, it's, it's across from the bottom depart. Okay, so Ah, perdón, Yes, it's across from the park. You can look it. Thanks. Hello. <laughs> Muy bien, excelente. ¿Alguien más que quiera? Que quiera practicar? Yo sería el hombre. Bueno, ¿con quién, Rosemary? Si no hay nadie, bueno, yo también. Yo quiero ser más. ¿Sayuri? Sí. Ah, vaya. Está bien. Me Practica. comienzo. Excuse me, can you help me? Is there a public restroom around here? 
a ver al revés. Oh no, my son needs a restroom. Now it's an emergency. Oh, there well there's a restaurant in the department store on Main Street. Where on Main Street? It's on the corner of Main and First Avenue. On the corner of Main and, and First. Yes, it's across from the part you can't miss it. Thanks a lot. Bien, chicas. Ok, Wendy y Luis, son los últimos. Creo que Wendy está de oyente, si no me equivoco, la compañera. Sí, es verdad. Luis, ¿está por ahí, Luis? Sí, sí, aquí estoy. Okay, eh, ¿quiere ayudar? Sí, por mí no hay problema. Eh, si gusta Luis empieza y yo soy la segunda. Okay. Excuse me, can you help me? Is there a public restroom around here? A public restroom? Mm, I'm sorry, I don't think so. Oh, no, my son needs a restroom. Now it is an emergency. Oh, dear. Well, there a restroom in the department store on Main Street? Where on Main Street? It's on the corner of Main and First Avenue. On the corner of Main uh, Pierce? Yes, is across from the park. You can miss it. Damn, a lot. Thank Bien, you. chicos. Bien, chicos. Excellent. No sé quién más también. Si lo volvemos a repetir la última vez más. Yo digo sí. que sí, hay que cambiar como los roles. Sí. Uh -huh. No sé quién quiere empezar y la otra que sí. Empiezo yo. Ok. ¿Otra voluntaria? ¿Yo? Ay, no. Quizás para la siguiente porque ya había dicho esta. ¿Cómo? Uh, ya había, por ejemplo, la primera sí no la he hecho, sino que iba haciendo lo... Uh, creo que son de oyentes. Creo que parece. Eh, teacher, una pregunta. Hola. Hola. Una pregunta, ¿por qué? Bueno, no sé si, si entiendo bien, que veo que estábamos utilizando bathroom y ahora resto. No sé si es cuando el contexto es de eh, mi baño, como bathroom, y no sé si es como más formal resto cuando es en público o el baño de alguien más. No, la diferencia es que si decimos bath, la, el bath es porque hay donde bañarse, donde tomar una ducha. Bathroom es el cuarto de baño, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Entonces, de ahí viene el bath, bathroom. Eh, normalmente en las casas eh, está, ¿verdad? Bathroom porque es donde se puede bañar y también pues hacer... Eh, las necesidades luego restroom en los lugares en un restaurante en una cafetería en un almacén solo va a encontrar para lo que es la necesidad verdad uh -huh. no hay baño no hay sí, lugar donde baño. bañarse entonces esa es la diferencia bathroom hay baño hay para bañarse pues y restroom uh -huh. es solo el, el para hacer las necesidades y lavarse las manos 
por eso los de lugares públicos suelen eh, um, identificarse como restroom. Oh, ok. Uh -huh. Thank you. You're welcome. Bien, yeah, estamos todos y veo que la, um, la asistencia se mantuvo. En los grupos estuve por ahí escuchando, hicieron un excelente trabajo, hicieron varias repeticiones y en el último que estuve, pues surgió una pregunta que a lo mejor les puede servir eh, la información. Me decían cuál es la diferencia entre restroom y bathroom. Les comentaba que restroom Normalmente en los lugares públicos se identifica como restroom, en una cafetería, en un almacén, en un centro comercial, eh, restroom. ¿Por qué? Solo es para ir a hacer las necesidades, pues nomás está el, 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 la, la taza y pues donde lavarse las manos. En un bathroom, acuérdense que bath es de, viene de baño, de bañarse, ¿no? Entonces, en un bathroom hay donde bañarse y pues lo normal es que también hay donde se puedan hacer las necesidades. Así es que esa es la diferencia de bathroom y restroom. Así que eso era todo. Eh, no sé si tienen alguna otra pregunta antes de finalizar la sesión. Okay. No, teacher. Bien, entonces... So thank you so much for joining and see you tomorrow. Remember that we only have three classes left. Ya solo quedan tres clases, es que no falten y completar la plataforma. So see you tomorrow. Sleep well and okay, thank you, teacher. Thank you. Good see you tomorrow. Good night. Good night, teacher. Bye. See you. Goodbye.